Hello, my name is Eli Ben Sison. I'm co founder and president at Starkware. And this talk is going to be about Stark, Skyro, and StarkNet. So it's going to be done by answering a bunch of questions. The first one is why learn Cairo? And the short answer is in order to build L2 applications with the same security as L1 of Ethereum, but with exponentially greater throughput, or put differently, you will get exponentially lower gas cost per transaction. So that's a good reason to learn. Now, how do we do this or where, where is this accessible? So this is already achieved today in production on Starkware's StarkX systems. And there are three of them already deployed. There is Diversify, which launched in July of last year. It reaches 9,000 TPS for trading and 18,000 for payments, which is way more than the 10 to 20 TPS of native Ethereum. There is Immutable that launched about a month ago um, and reduces the cost per NFT from roughly $40 to one fifth of a cent or 20,000 X reduction in gas cost. And there's DYDX with perpetual trading um, that lowers gas costs for their trades by a factor of 50X. So all of this goodness right now appears only on Starkware's systems uh, built for its customers. <clears throat> but by summer, uh, all can start deploying on StarkNet. So, and then achieving similar kind of gas costs, which is great. So that answers the question of why learn Cairo, because everything we'll be doing on StarkNet is going to be written in Cairo. Um, the second question that I want to answer is how do we exactly scale with Cairo? How does Cairo help us scale? And the short answer to that is that the computational integrity of executions of Cairo programs is automatically and efficiently proved using the ZK Start proof system and placed on a blockchain. So this sentence may sound a little bit cryptic. And because of that, I want to expand on it in the next few slides. So let's take a step back and talk about four parts that appear in this sentence. Uh, well, three of them appear in. Uh, we're going to talk about computational integrity, what it means and why do we need it. We're going to talk about a particular method to achieve integrity, which is cryptographic proofs. Within the family of cryptographic proofs, we're going to say a few things about Starks, which is the technology I'm describing. And finally, we're going to discuss uh, AIRs, uh, algebraic intermediate representations, and get to Cairo. Um, okay. So computational integrity or integrity is famously, you know, there's this famous quote that says that integrity means doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. And computational integrity would mean that even if you're running your computation on L2 and no one sees how you operate the system, you still do it exactly as if it would have been sitting on L1 with everyone watching and executing it. So there are different methods to ensure uh, computational integrity, actually five of them that I am aware of. So two of them are very traditional. Those are reputation-based. Um, and delegated accountability, where society basically delegates the process of holding the system accountable to a bunch of uh, you know, accountants, lawyers, regulators. So banks operate under this reputation-based delegated accountability. There is naive replay and inclusive accountability, which means everyone is invited to rerun all computations that take place on the system and check each and every one of them. That's known as L1 uh, security or Bitcoin is an example for such a thing. There's uh, the trusted execution environments like Intel's SGX, in which basically you assume that there is a physical computer that cannot be tampered with and which is encrypted and sort of uh, this enclave that has full computational integrity and moreover it can sign over its correct executions. So it has some physical trust assumption about the uh, inability to leak out of this enclave. And this assumption is kind of problematic, which makes the whole framework a little bit problematic. But uh, under this assumption, you could get computational integrity. <clears throat> then there are two uh, blockchain uh, native kinds of uh, techniques for ensuring computational integrity. One is fraud proofs, also known as optimistic rollups, um, in which uh, basically you are relying on game theoretic incentives and some subset of the nodes 
playing as watchtowers. Uh, so it's some version of delegated, something between delegated accountability and the naive replay, um, along with a fraud, a fraud proof mechanism for it. And the last one, which is the one I want to focus on, is cryptographic proofs. Things like ZK Starks, there are also snarks and bulletproofs and uh, plonks and many other critters uh, in this space. And I want to now explain a little bit what cryptographic proofs are. So proofs, uh, cryptographic proof systems have two parts. There's a prover and a verifier. And the prover is the party which you do not want to assume any trust assumptions about it. You don't know who the prover exactly is, or it might be malicious. The prover wants to prove a computational integrity statement. So here's an example of such a statement. The statement would be, I've processed a million transactions and they cause the state of the system I have, the system of accounts, from having Merkle hash A to having Merkle hash B. Um, so this is a statement which may be correct or incorrect, but you would like the statement, you would like to accept the statement only if it's correct. So the prover is the party that generates a proof for such a statement in the attempt of convincing the verifier to accept it. So here below we have this sort of, uh, there's a million transactions coming into the prover, the prover generates a proof and the, verify is, the verifier is supposed to verify it. Okay, so these are cryptographic proofs. And some kinds of them, in particular ZK Starks, there are others that achieve similar things. And I don't want to go into a, a big discussion of all the different flavors of cryptographic proofs. I do have a blog about it, and there's a webcast under the Cambrian explosion of cryptographic proofs. So you're all welcome to go and read more about this. But I'll focus now just on ZK Starks. So the ZK part in a ZK start means that the proofs, this uh, pi that is down here, um, reveals no information about the exact transactions that came into the uh, system. Uh, rather, uh, the only thing you know is what you can learn from the computational integrity statement, but not from the proof. The proof reveals no information and it shields the private inputs <coughs> that went into the proving process. And the second aspect of ZK Starks is scalability, which means that you have uh, exponentially small verifier running time with respect to the size of the computation. And the proving time is also extremely efficient. It's nearly linear. And these two things together mean that as you scale the size of your system and have more and more transactions, proving time doesn't, uh, I mean, scales nearly linearly with it, while verifier time scales very, very slowly. And you can essentially compress the amount of work needed to verify in computational integrity. Um, there are other attributes that ZK Starks come with. Uh, one is universality. So you can build a ZK Stark system for any uh, general computation. Um, and this is where Kyra is gonna come in. It will be a language that is very, uh, good for writing programs so that you get uh, efficient Stark proofs. There's uh, transparency, which means that ZK Starks have no trusted setup. There's no toxic waste. And finally, the cryptography underlying Starks is very lean and battle hardened. You only need this to assume that there is a, a, you know, a cryptographic hash function. And in particular, these systems are post quantum secure. So the way a Stark uh, would help you uh, in the context of a blockchain, so blockchain says, uh, you know, verify all transactions, don't trust them. So currently the system in Ethereum is that each and every transaction is sent to each and every node that participates in the network and each one of these nodes uh, reads the transactions and updates the set of accounts accordingly. Well, you could have all of those transactions, instead of being sent to the network, you could have them sent to the prover. You don't have to assume anything about the prover. The prover will process these transactions and generate a proof. The proof is gonna be exponentially smaller than the number of transactions that went into it. And then you can submit this proof to the network. So what you do is suppose the state of the system was in some state old and uh, the prover has processed a thousand transactions and wants to move it to a new state. The only thing that needs to be sent to the network is just the proof, which is exponentially smaller than the number of transactions and the new state. Um, and this is how uh, our current StarkX systems work. And this is also going to be the way that StarkNet works uh, with a general state of the network being updated from time to time with very small proofs. 
So now I wanna get a little bit deeper into how one builds a Stark. And there are various kinds of Starks. I'm gonna focus on the ones we build, which have been dubbed by others, but it's a kind of cool name, a Fry Air or an Air Fry Stark, because it uses the two algebraic components called Air and Fry. So you start with a computational integrity statement, something, you know, a particular computation that you want uh, being proved. And then there's this phase called arithmetization, which takes the computation and it's the transition function of this uh, computation and breaks it up into a bunch of polynomial constraints, uh, something known as an algebraic intermediate re representation. Those familiar with the ZK snarks may recognize the term uh, R1CS. So airs are the Stark analog of R1CS. Um, then there is a phase of low degree testing, which in Starks uses the fast read Solomon I of P of proximity. And finally, there is a cryptography applied to make everything uh, um, you know, communicatable and leads to a scalable, transparent argument of knowledge or a Stark, and that's the proof. Okay, so this is like sort of this bubble, this gray bubble opens up what the Stark proof is. Now, <clears throat> there are parts of this uh, reduction or of this process that depend on the computational integrity statement. And there are, th those are the two parts on the left. And there are parts on the right that do not depend and uh, they are generic. And the transition function is this uh, very elaborate set of constraints um, over something called uh, a trace. And uh, each time you have a different computation, uh, you're gonna have to have a different trace. And it's quite complicated to start building errors for specific computations. So this is a visualizer that we use in Starkware for seeing uh, you know, the constraints that build up an error. And uh, you can sort of, uh, using this visualizer, hover over a particular area and see which constraints are applying to it. And you, I think you get the picture that this isn't a very easy system to work with in order to um, specify the computations you care about. So you need something better. Um, <clears throat> the first systems we built were in this uh, ASIC-like uh, Stark mode, where each time you have a different statement uh, referring, let's say one refers to NFT trading, the other may refer to uh, uh, you know, um, perpetual uh, contract um, and margin trading. These will be different computations. You're going to have to build by hand using something like this visualizers. You're going to have to build some new set of constraints. And uh, this is quite complicated. So um, instead of that, what Cairo does is it streamlines all of this. And basically, there's a compiler that reduces everything to uh, Cairo bytecode that is then sent as input to one universal air uh, for Neumann machine that can interpret any program. And uh, then by doing this, we have moved from a world where people need to craft by hand uh, a bunch of constraints into a world where you just have to write computer programs and they get automatically compiled into something that can execute them and prove things about them. So what is Cairo? Cairo is the first universal von Neumann Stark architecture, uh, which means it has scalability, uh, exponentially small verify running time and nearly linear proving time. It is transparent, no toxic weight, waste, and it is a universal. Um, it's the first universal von Neumann verifier uh, for any proof system on a blockchain, on Ethereum mainnet. And um, another nice thing about Cairo is that uh, it's what I like to call an MVL, a minimal viable language for getting production Stark systems. It follows the Goldilocks principle, which is you know not too hot, not too cold. It's a good balance between expressibility, so being able to express programs, and uh, resulting efficiency of the Stark prover. So it's not too hot, it's very simple. It has only three registers, um, a PC, an allocation pointer, a frame pointer. It has a very minimalistic instruction set. On the other hand, it's not too cold. It supports functions, recursion, branching, conditionals, access to random memory, and so on and so forth. And below here, you see some snippets of the Cairo language that uh, further talks, uh, later talks are gonna deep dive into and show you how to work with them. 
So um, being production ready means that it's not just that there's a specification of the language, there's also a very vast tool chain that is uh, available to all of you. Uh, there's compiler, virtual machine, ID extensions, tracer, application codes, all kinds of examples. In fact, uh, all of the um, Starkware's programs being executed on these StarkX machines are uh, right now they're already source available and very shortly they'll be um, open sourced under Apache 2.0. We're in the process of doing this. So everything is sort of accessible to you today. So um, to recap and uh, explain, answer again the big question, which is why uh, learn Cairo and what's it got to do with Starks and uh, StarkNet. So the foundations for StarkNet uh, lie on Starks and writing programs in Cairo. And StarkNet, the language of StarkNet is gonna be based on Cairo. Um, and if you want to reach with your own uh, dApps, you know, in the summer when StarkNet starts being launched. If you want to reach the same kind of scaling that we reach currently with our Cairo programs, then you better go and learn some Cairo and benefit from the power and scalability of uh, ZK Starks. Uh, yeah, so you want to use ZK Starks, you want to use them in an accessible way, you learn Cairo, you write your programs in that way, and when StarkNet launches, you're going to benefit from low gas, huge TPS transactions per second, and this all this goodness comes your way summer 2021, so now is the time to start learning. Um, so... The road from ZK Stark to StarkNet starts at Cairo. Uh, you can uh, join our Cairo Dev Discord, or you can go to CairoLang.org, where you can download all the stuff you need and start uh, tinkering around with it. So happy biddling, and thank you very much.